we have celebrated sanatan we have celebrated the sacred i now invite hari kiran ji to talk about the theme which is science namaste bhai sorry um it's very difficult to bring you all down to the earth after the awesome speech by uh, sonal ji but um, um now that we have tasted the 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 depth of indian tradition um both from the from its manifestation to its core you must have seen that it it should not it must not have been produced out of nothing there must have been such deep study um and in what we in the modern terms called science uh, that science nothing other than that science could have produced that that depth and that breadth of uh, knowledge so um in order to really experience that we should learn how to enter into our our own literature and uh, that that cannot be done uh, except by enthusing our youngsters and uh, as uh, so ram madhav ji has mentioned um this is all about exciting uh, youngsters to get into uh, our uh, indic knowledge and uh, take take it from what we have to newer heights and uh, to do that to inspire them requires first understanding what excites them and uh, and uh, nothing uh, as of now uh, i will i'm going to talk about uh, so the the title was uh, was suggested by uh, vikram sampad ji i think um, shastras and data mining data mining is a modern term uh, it's a technology term and shastras is what we have um and uh, how to connect the two and uh, why are we connecting the two the the reason for connection is mainly to show the innovation possible and unless you show the innovation youngsters will not get attracted however great it might be they want to you know they want to show impact make impact and uh, so I, uh, so my little attempt at uh, uh, at achieving that is what i'm going to talk about today so so as we know um, india was a developed country for uh, millennia that has been um, studied and uh, science has been at the base of it and uh, the proof of that is the staggering intellectual output even even if you let's say put aside spirituality and and its uh, other things just the intellectual output of india has been staggering in terms of just the numbers there are three levels uh, one of course is written literature the the one that is passed on paramparagat and uh, of course the physical architectural marvels you have seen um just even the liter- written literature the manuscripts uh, of which we have um i was searching on the internet for how much what is the total size of ma- manuscripts observe you know found in other you know rest of the world compared to what we have Man- national manuscript mission the counts are 4 million as of now and counting uh 4 million manuscripts re- compared to 1 million comp- the rest of the world so and that too before the advent of the printing press so so you can you can imagine like how much intellectual activity must have happened and this is not actually co- covering there's a lot of stuff that might have happened that is just coming through traditions oral traditions those kinds of things that is not that might not have been actually captured so even with discounting all the other aspect there is so much that has happened and um, now just a couple of examples uh, we we know um, again i'm trying to focus on the what we consider as modern scientific uh, uh, in- innovations so recently i just came across in tirupati there was a study five year study of rainfall prediction with panchanga and um, working closely with our indian meteorological department on um, basically indian panchanga has to predict the um, rainfall patterns in a particular area or even maybe in the entire country one and a half years ahead of time whereas the modern weather modeling basically does it 
maybe at the most nine months, something like that. Um, and they found that our accuracy is much higher than the modern weather models. And the reason being, they take certain other parameters into account, which uh, the modern weather modeling doesn't, uh, doesn't take. And just as an example, so there must be a lot of study that must have been done in the, to get that one. So similarly, there is a recent discovery that Bakshali manuscript, um, it's, uh, it talks about a square root algorithm that is, that converges like uh, at quarter, quarter, that means to the power of four speed, that means uh, that much faster. And uh, that was done in second century, like at least 1500 years before Newton. Um, and um, and we, of course, we have our Ayurveda and, and so on. So we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot of indie contributions. Um, and there's a reason to study, go back and study what they are. Okay, next slide. So, um, so what is this Indic knowledge? Indic knowledge, uh, is there such a thing as Indic knowledge, American knowledge? Yes, it's uh, basically, uh, by Indic knowledge we mean knowledge as developed and nurtured in India just to you know set the context and uh, there are basically three uh, we, we can look at the overall knowledge space into three buckets those the knowledge that the study of oneself or study of the subject study of the object that is the universe and study of knowledge itself which is basically organizing codifying processing all those things so in, in if you if you this is one way to classify knowledge if you do it this way basically um, in the modern ter terminology, most of the study, most of the scientific innovations, uh, the focus has been in this objective knowledge, what is called objective knowledge. But there is a huge opportunity for basically uh, Indian sciences impacting the current situation uh, with the other two, which is the meta knowledge or the knowledge science and the subjective knowledge, which is psychology and so on. Right? Okay, next slide. So um, now, just this is just to give a background of what uh, what we this Indic sciences are all about. There is uh, I was surprised to know that there is a methodology for writing scientific texts that is basically used across all shastras, and that has its basis in this Pada Vakya Pramana shastras, Nyaya, Mimamsa, and the Vyakarana, and uh, they all have they have the, they have the same. The beauty is. Only one language is, you don't have to invent a new language to do science, like mathematics. In, in, in our terminology, we have one language, Sanskrit. You just take a subset of it that becomes the language for one Shastra. That's it. And, you know, and then there is a, uh, there is a common modeling plat uh, paradigm that is, that is adopted by everybody. If you know this paradigm, then entering into this world of Indian Shastras becomes easier. That's, that is what I was uh, discovering. And uh, the other aspect of Indic knowledge systems is that they are highly interconnected. There is a saying that says, Ekam Shastram uh, Adhyano na, na Gachet Shastra Nirnaim. One who knows only one Shastra is not eligible even to talk about that Shastra. Okay. So, <laughs> so it is say, highly interconnected. And, uh, and so, so because of that, it is actually a great thing about our knowledge system because of it. And it's also a stumbling block for newer people who are not trained in that model, okay? And uh, there is a Shastra for everything, okay? Indians uh, seem to be like fond of creating Shastras, <laughs> okay? Next slide. And uh, as I mentioned, so to do, to really unearth this whole thing is a huge problem. As we, as we mentioned, like there are four million manuscripts and uh, as if you know, manuscriptology, basically taking one manuscript and deciphering it and then proofreading it and all that stuff takes at least two years apparently. And uh, you know, without, without doing something here with respect to, to speed it up, it's impossible task basically, right? And, um, and the, 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 so now you have your, our youngsters who are the only hope to be able to do this kind of stuff and they are facing very big, you know, big uh, stumbling blocks. One, of course, the language is hard, hard to decipher and understand, uh, highly interwoven texts and a steep learning curve and, uh, the, and the number of scholars who know that interdisciplinary knowledge are actually very few. Uh, and, and as you know, since no, next generation is 
you know, at ev with every generation, the knowledge quality is, uh, you know, coming down because of whatever reasons. Um, that's a problem, right? Next. So, and the most important problem is the will is also going less right now. The reason is, uh, I feel, this is my personal opinion, is that the potential for new innovation is not clear. If you talk to anybody, you know, I have been talking to these typical IITs, IIS students, um, they are all interested in Indian stuff from, you know, on a personal level. But if you ask them, will you do a project on something, they say no, because they cannot sell themselves to the market uh, with whatever they do on this end. At least they know, they think that they cannot, but th so that is a, that's an issue. And, and, um, and it feels retrograde, it's fe it feels retrograde and it's not uh, um, uh, something that they, they can actually innovate on and create something with the world doesn't know, that kind of thing, right? And uh, the solution is basically, you, in order to really take this technology forward, uh, take, the, uh, take the knowledge and uh, mine it, you need technology and you need really the latest technology, big data, okay, as you know, 4 million manuscripts times you know, the number of pages and the amount of metadata involved is huge. So to do, really do that requires um, technology and it, it opens up a lot of very interesting innovative pro problems, even if the student is not interested in technology, not interested in Indic sciences, just applying whatever they are doing to the um, in, uh, to exploration of Indian Shastras itself is a rewarding experience, itself it contributes to this. So that is second one. Second one is learn, leverage new technology innovatively to make Indic knowledge more intelligible in the sense to make the, reduce the barrier to studying knowledge, that is the reason. That, that is second one. And third one, third possibility is to make traditional scholars who have studied the shastras in the traditional way think about application mode, okay? That is the other one. So, so there is, in, in all the three cases, technology and, and the marrying technology with shastra studies has a benefit. So to do that, to do really these kinds of things, we, uh, we have been thinking about a broad platform uh, to make whatever has been developed so far into uh, so the people can build on top of each other's work. Today it's all in shambles. There's a lot of point tools, a uh, lot of excited, excited work happened, useful, but, but in, a, in its own way. There's no way to put them together to create something bigger. And to do that requires a more end-to-end -end systems uh, level uh, thinking. And uh, so this is the uh, overall uh, workflow that we basically uh, envisioned. And next slide. So, um, so what does it take to make help a person um, study um, unique knowledge in a, you know, without having to memorize which was the uh, gift of the olden people, but which we don't have anymore? Is that you need to provide them a multi-level view of the thing, where it it is it starts from the root text. You have to should not rely on translations, but but give them a like um, step by step way to approach the root text. And uh, um, so that requires, basically, we, we want what we call it as an e-reader for Sanskrit texts. Um, and uh, next one. So um, the, the broad projects that we're talking about is, one is the, the, the digitize, which makes it easy for processing, easy, accessible, and searchable. Second one, to be able to convert that into information that can be actually mined. And the third one is utilize it for actually application, uh, creating applications, useful applications. Next slide. Yes, so in order to do that, we have to, uh, as I mentioned, we have a systematic uh, approach we need to create, and that is what is the three-layer model that we have, uh, we are trying to build. It's like the platform app model where you can create a common platform that applications re 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 leverage, on, leverage on, and then on, on top of it have the users. Okay, next slide. So here is an example, just quickly, um, the, to illustrate the difficulty of studying Shastras. Here is a typical example text. Okay, it is lots of uh, compounds and uh, you know, everything introverted, it's, it's actually very difficult to go through. Um, and then, uh, next slide. The difficulty is there at multiple levels. There is the, the exposition style is too detailed, hard to locate what is, you know, what is the term, if I get a new term, how, what is its meaning? 
searching it through in the in these books is very hard except when you memorize everything and keep it in your head okay so next like next one suppose you converted whatever that that thing into this kind of a graph wherein basically your what you are studying is one shloka that is the zero and you are basically organizing the rest of the uh, rest of the um, uh, sentences into something that you can drill down as you need okay if that is what uh, can uh, it can be converted into then it becomes much easier to drill uh, navigate the shastra system okay next slide um this is an example um so it's a, we have converted basically one very very uh, primary text in nyaya into this kind of thing it's what uh, so it looks like the re the point to note is that there's a lot of links each each dot is a sentence there's a lot of drill down that you have to do and all that can be done as needed basis instead of uh, sifting through this flat text okay next one this is another arthashastra converted into a map so this is the kind of stuff interface we are trying to develop next and this is the this is a basic text in ayurveda that we are uh, that we are trying to uh, make it simplify uh, simple for users next last slide Uh, and the reason why this is all possible is because we have to the shastra texts are so well organized that they all by themselves they have they have that layering of uh, semantic level understanding built into them so you can actually the shastrakara himself writes a nice key of how to interpret his own book at the end of the book that is called tantra yukti so those those kinds of things we can leverage to be, make this kind of a easier to navigate interface for the text and uh, and uh, so next next slide so um now so we are basically trying to create a, an easier approach to enter into our shastra system um for in order to really appreciate the the scientific contributions of india you have to bet your feet you have to get into one shastra uh, and uh, only then can you appreciate this thing otherwise you cannot then be cheer leaders uh and uh, to help you wet your feet we have a course that we are offering um uh, uh, by scholars who have un who understand both sides you know the shastra type and then the modern educated people how what they will be able to understand and uh, uh, we are we are trying to offer that one and but anyway so there is a lot of uh, this uh, interdisciplinary effort technologists and shastra shastra pandits should come together to be able to do these kinds of things and uh, i welcome uh, you all to help with this in any way and at least participate thank you